In this video, we will explore what user security context is and how to propagate it to other threads during asynchronous execution in Java Spring Boot. But first, let's start with synchronous execution. Imagine we have a use case where several tasks need to be run by invoking a URL. In Spring Boot, we can quickly create an endpoint called slash run tasks, as we see on the screen, create a mapping, and then return the result. I'm not showing all the code. You can imagine the rest. Here, all the activities related to the run tasks method are synchronous. Do task one, do task two, and notify systems are all executed on the same thread, a user handling thread for that particular request. Now, let's say you would like to implement the notify systems method in the background. The run task method should simply initiate the notify systems method, but not wait till it completes. This is where it is convenient to use the at async annotation of Spring Boot. Let's see what it is. So here we create a new Spring Bean called async service, which is annotated with at service. The method notify systems is annotated with async because we want the method to be run on a different thread from the calling thread. In our example, the demo controller will call it. Let's see how. So here's how the demo controller class will call it. It will simply auto-wire the async service right over here and then call the method from within the run pass method right over here. Now don't think about this call as a simple method call. At async annotations on that method does some magic behind the scenes. Spring Boot introduces a proxy in the middle and when async serve dot notify systems is called, the Spring Boot proxy will make sure that the code is actually executed on a different thread, but the proxy method will immediately return, making it asynchronous. But how will Spring Boot figure out which thread the async method should run on? As developers, we can specify that as configuration. We specify a thread pool task executor, which is essentially a thread pool which will be used by Spring Boot to execute all methods marked with async annotation. If we do not specify this, Spring Boot will default to an executor, which may not be what you want. Now that we have seen how at async works, let's see what is a user security context. If we assume that our code is secure, then any running code in our application would be associated with a user who has certain privileges. In application servers, code always runs on a dedicated thread for a user request, which means it's common to associate security information to this dedicated thread. Now, this user information is called the security context of that thread, essentially saying that this thread is running as a particular user with certain privileges. Now, Spring Security makes sure that after the authentication of a user, an object of type authentication is set in a security context object for every request. And it is stored in a thread local of the thread which is handling that particular request. A developer can access this authentication object. One way to do this is to simply auto wire as a method parameter. And that's exactly what you see on the screen right over here. Now, another way we are going to see that later on is to use a class called security context holder. Now, here we assume that we are running the code with default implementation of security by just adding spring security jar to our pom.xml. In practice, the principal object which we are casting to user needs to be cast to the correct class depending on the type of authentication whether we are using OAuth, Jot, SAML, and so on. Now, with this technique, the principal and the roles can be accessed for authorization within our run tasks method. But will the about technique work from within the async method? In this example, the notify systems method. Note that in the example here, 
we are using security context holder class directly to get the authentication object and not auto wiring it. That's another way to get the authentication object. But the answer to that question, whether this will work here, is no. The variable authn will be empty. That is, it's going to be null. Why, you may ask? Recall that this method will be executed on a different thread. We know that Spring Boot sets the authentication object of the user in a class called security context for the user handling thread. But by default, this security context is not propagated to the thread which is executing the async method. That's why if we were to get the authentication object as you see on the screen, we will see that that authentication variable is null. But we would like to be able to access the security context from within the at async method. It definitely helps in any kind of authorization we need to do in that thread. So how can we do this? In order to propagate the security context to the thread which runs the async method, we should use the delegating security context async task executor. That's a mouthful. We see that on the screen. With this simple change, the security context will be propagated to the async thread as well. We can access the authentication object from the async thread just like we did before. But you might be thinking here, how did this magic happen? Let's take a look at it. What exactly happens when we use the executor delegating security context async task executor? In order to understand that, let's take a look at the diagram on the screen. I love these diagrams. It makes things a lot clearer. On the right side, we see a thread pool called task executor in which one thread is shown, thread one. There are other threads as part of the pool which are executing other async methods but they are not shown in the diagram. On the left side, you see a thread representing the user handling thread. And the run task method is called on this thread. Recall that every user request will have one such user handling thread associated with it, which services the request. Spring Boot correctly sets the security context for the user handling thread as part of the Spring security authentication. We know this. Now when the async serve dot notify systems method is called, right over here, Spring Boot will submit a task to the task executor thread pool. In our example, that task gets executed on thread one. If we use the delegating security context async task executor, the task will first set the security context correctly on thread one. It basically copies it from the user handling thread. Now this is marked as one right over here. After that, it will proceed to execute the notify systems method marked as two. And then finally clears the security context marked as three. It's important to understand that thread one is a thread which is continuously handling other tasks as well. So setting the security context and later clearing it guarantees that the user security context is available only for that method call of notify system. The next task which is run on that thread one cannot see that security context. I hope this gives you a good idea of how to propagate the user security context when using at async methods in Spring Boot. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more such quality content.